sunlit world of what he believes to be reality. But there is, unseen by most, an underworld, a place that is just as real, but not as brightly lit. A dark side. The following contains images of graphic violence. Viewer discretion is advised. Breaking news. This is Piers Morgan Live. Breaking news tonight. A Malaysia Airlines plane carrying 239 people bound for Beijing is missing. According to a statement from the airline air traffic control. In tonight's big story, the exact whereabouts and fate of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 remains a mystery. More than 18 hours after the plane was reported missing. Good morning. First, our main story. Search teams are still trying to establish what happened to a Malaysia Airlines passenger plane that disappeared over the South China Sea with 239 people on board. The Boeing 777 disappeared en route to Beijing from Kuala Lumpur. Radar indicates that the plane may have turned back from its scheduled route. No wreckage has been found yet, although two oil slicks have been spotted. I picked the wrong week. Quit sniffing blue. Something, something funny, like the sensation of speed. I can't put my finger on it. I'm getting old. True ASP 470 was level. You suppose we picked up a tailwind? Yeah, maybe those jet streams are tricky. Is that crazy?
crazy feeling I can't shake yet. I can't feel a tailwind, but I, I feel something. Everything looks fine. a ground speed of 830 knots. I never heard of a tailwind like that. Check it again. See if you can raise the weather ship, Charlie. Yes, sir. Ask him for a radar fix and a ground speed check. Level 33. Magellan, are you sure about that ground speed? Level 33. We're not only ship, sure, but we're still accelerating. Level 33. The weather ship, Charlie. 980 now. 1120. 1500. Bubble 33 to weather ship, Charlie. God in heaven, I can't even keep up with it. Bubble 33 to weather ship. 
Weathership Charlie. Global 33 to Weathership Charlie. What about Charlie? Nothing, sir. I can't raise them. 2100. Well, I hope the wings stay on. Hey, well, don't worry about the wings. It's the true airspeed that counts. Ground speed means nothing. I know we just hit one Lulu of a jet stream. So just minutes ago, you posted a story for the Wall Street Journal with some really staggering new details about that first turn the plane took. What can you tell us? So this investigation appears to be, to be moving very quickly toward a law enforcement or terrorism path. Every day it's harder and harder to come up with a credible argument that this was an accident. And what, what we're uh, putting uh, on the website and uh, we'll put in tomorrow's paper are some details about what the investigators suspect was happening on that plane, some deliberate actions. In a space of six hours, someone or a group turned off three different signaling systems on that aircraft to hide its location, and investigators also believe that that about an hour after takeoff, just after the transponders stopped operating, someone manually made the aircraft turn to the left. And in addition to that, um, there, there are strong suspicions that in order to disable one of the signaling systems, someone had to go down to the uh, lower portion of the aircraft, leave the cockpit, and disable that system. And so therefore, of course, that presumes that someone else may have been in the cockpit to control or to monitor the plane. So these are all um, aspects that the investigators are really actively looking at, and it, it just adds much more ammunition to the notion that this is some kind of uh, sabotage, terrorism, whatever you want to call it, but not an accident.
songs you are about to hear are intended for mature listening audiences only. If you have a weak mind or heart and don't like words like shit, fuck, or cunt, then please refrain from listening any further. Stop for some real music. It's showtime! Los Angeles and the rest of the world. You know what time it is. You're listening to Subversive Radio at its finest. Oh, hang on a minute. I, I, I can't deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Cat- so fucking skinny jeans suck! Cats are fucking- doing the pee pee pants <laughs> dance. <laughs> fucking nutsack. The skinny <laughs> pants pee pee dance. All right, all right, all right. You Sorry. are committing a massive fashion faux pas oh, right now, these fucking counselor. Pets. How, how, how does this young generation wear this? They don't eat. Mr. X, how do you wear this shit? <laughs> Mr. X I mean, is skinny. You can get away with this. You're a heterosexual, so I understand that, you know, this is you gay. You gotta do what you gotta do. This yeah, is gay dude. as fuck! <laughs> counselor, you have officially crossed the line. Oh, my God. All right. You know, uh, you- Los Angeles and the rest of the world. Uh, <laughs> If you're over 40 and obese, you and do not skinny wear jeans. skinny jeans. You fairy. Ugh. This oh, is fucking the- bad. <laughs> All right, let We're me in re- downtown <laughs> that WeHo, dude. Let, 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 me, let me regain my composure. <laughs> Focus. I appreciate the fact that, you know, a lovely young lady who I'm um, exchanging bodily fluids with yep. bought me these jeans. You know, she's like, hey, you look great in them. You know, they, they hug your, they make your, your figure look... Great. Listen. Jesus Christ. You're already swallowing fucking the DNA milkshake. I don't need to wear this shit. I mean, I appreciate the effort. I really do. I mean, that's an incredible woman right there. Right? Right? Hands off, Jenny. Isn't that an incredible woman? You have to give her credit. You got to give her credit. uh, But I'm obese. 
Christ. High five for effort. I mean, dude, like, I'm fucking... I hope you have diabetes. I'm diabetic! <laughs> I'm fat! I mean, it's it's simple. You know, I, I, I follow your exploits on Facebook, as oh, do right. a lot of us do. <laughs> and I've seen how you've been eating lately. I'm out of control, dude. And... Those jeans. By the way, not, let me just wait. Let me finish. Don't those jeans do not warrant what you have been eating? Sorry, no. Uh uh-uh. uh You need to go to curves, dude. <laughs> let me first start off by saying that you're right. I am. A, I am actually out of control. As you, as you personally know, Los Johnny. There's a lot of issues that I have. About, hands off, Jenny, as well. She's seen my bipolar side. Um, <laughs> me too. Especially when she fucks up, right? You, you've seen that evil side, right? Don't I become a bitch? Don't I start crying like a? Hey, what are you doing? All right. Here's the deal. I am out of control. I when I realize that I'm out of control, that's frightening. Yeah, been drinking way too much on Sunday. <laughs> Drink, you're drinking right now. I mean, uh, what did we get today? What like a, a fucking twenty four pack? Yes, which sir. you know you and I are going to consume. Yes, right. That'll we're, be finished around what two? two uh, <laughs> the only good thing about that is I can recycle those cats. But anyways, <laughs> the eating is getting out of control. Yeah, dude, I, I see those pictures, man. That you you are a heart attack on fucking. The waiting list. Now, dude, here, here's the deal. This is what's very frightening about myself is that I, I have this very destructive cycle. I know when I'm at the deep end. I know that I'm like really pushing it to, I'm really pushing the envelope. But yet, it's just something that like I ignore. And what's sad about it is that I'm like dating this very lovely young lady who's just trying to please me. She's just trying to please me. You know, I mean, she's an incredible woman. She Don't get is. Me wrong. I, I, I the do fact that I'm not cheating on her is incredible. Why am I not cheating on her? What, what, what is that? But anyways, yeah, she's trying to please me. But dude, I have this very destructive cycle personality. I mean, it, it's like, I mean, if I was a heroin addict, it's like if you're giving me fucking ounces of fucking tar heroin, I'm going to just do it yeah. to the max. You're like Philip Seymour Hoffman. But instead, of, he, instead of bags of heroin, you got bags of barbecue. Oh, you know what? <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Speaking of uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, I am an idiot. <laughs> I am a fucking idiot, but you know what made me realize that I'm a fucking idiot is today with these skinny jeans. Oh, Jesus I'm Christ, like, dude. dude. Are you going to be doing this to the entire show? I hope not. You know the black I, I are Sarah- going to be here, and Sarah's just going to look at you like, no, yeah, I got to go. I'm going to try my hardest. All right, let's get back on track. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Los Angeles, oh, and the rest boy. of the world for uh, dealing with uh, my own personal crisis. Ah, fashion faux pas. Let's get right into it. Malaysian Flight 370. Oh, boy. All week, we've been hearing all these hypotheses, possibilities of why it disappeared. Theories. All these theories. You know what? It's so fucking annoying because it really just makes common sense. Why don't you ask the sharks? Why don't you ask the great white Malaysian sea sharks? Very simple. Right? I mean, do we have the visual of a shark up there? Okay. <laughs> now, you know, this is interesting. Well, can we cue the Jaws music, please? I know. <laughs> the sharks, the great white sharks, are the people to be interviewing, or the animals to be interviewing, because they can honestly tell you that that flight not only hit the seas, but they got to feast. Yeah, they got a full fucking buffet. <laughs> A fucking airplane full of what? Two hundred people uh, and the pilots. I like how like they're Ooh, like me. coming up with all these theories of like, what well, did they land somewhere? Is it a real life? Remember like in ABC that TV show Lost? Yeah. Okay, the dude they no. didn't land in no, no fucking island and all this other. No, 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 no. Yeah, it, it, it's it's fucking funny how like. I mean, it's a fucking plane. It's not like a little dinghy boat in the middle of nowhere. It's a fucking plane. And then, you have to find it. Okay. Here's they the found a goddamn Titanic. They can find a plane. Even Salvador and Mike and his fucking marijuana consuming alcoholic ass knows that when you fact factor in these facts, Lost Johnny, because you're you're like really intelligent compared to like the rest of us who pretend to be. <laughs> there was two motherfuckers with fake passports. Ooh, right. So okay, I have to preface it. I'm not as well versed on the this particular story. I, I hear sit, I sit at home all day eating, watching the news. I know. <laughs> uh, I, I pick up a few things here and there, but uh, again, a fucking plane. It's a fucking plane. You can find that shit. Sonar. Well, get to do with the metal detector on a boat. Here, here's the deal. Yeah, I agree with you. 
Okay, I agree with you. NSA satellites can literally fucking find a fucking cell member. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you're telling me they can't find a fucking big plane? But what? It's because they don't give a fuck. If it was like an American airline, it'd be different. But, yeah. You know, they're, they're out there. They're doing the whole fucking, you know. Uh, We're really searching for the search for the, and rescue, which in, rea in reality. But you know what? Before I get into it, let's cue up this news conference. Hands off, Jenny. Cue up that news conference, please. At a press conference in Malaysia this morning, a government minister confirmed that they are investigating reports that at least two of the passengers had boarded the plane using stolen passports. Stolen. I'm in touch with the international uh, intelligence agencies. Um, at the same time, our own uh, intelligence has been uh, activated. And of course, um, the uh, counterterrorism terrorism units, CTIs and CTUs from all the relevant countries uh, will be, uh, have been informed and that's what I've been doing since yesterday. For now, this is still a search and rescue operation. Search and rescue operation? Are you sure fucking kidding me? Uh, Mr. Great White Shark, <laughs> can you please tell us what happened to that plane? <laughs> oh, I'm going to that was the best meal I've ever had. This is some really good sweet and sour I sauce. Really, I really like this Malaysia buffet. We were, we were started. We were started. We had it all day. We have it, we it all day. All right. First of all, let me just start search off by saying... Search and rescue, say, what a fucking joke. Let me first start off by saying that Malaysia's search and rescue does not compare to the United States search and rescue. No. Number two. Uh, Malaysian CTU does not compare anywhere near uh, the United States CTU. But, I mean, here, let, let's look at the facts here. It was revealed, you know, as you know, after 9-11 lost Johnny. I don't know, have you, have you flown lately? Because, I mean, yeah. w once I lost my fucking gig, I, I, all those debaucherous trips. Uh, I, I've, I've taken a few flights and a few international flights in the last five years. So, so. are you aware that not only are air, marsh air marshals are on, like, all United States domestic and international flights? Yep. Air marshals are no joke, by the way. No, no, right? no, they're, no. They're like the Navy SEALs of the sky. They'll fuck you up. Okay. Are you also aware that the pilots are all trained with firearms and they carry Sig Sauer P P226 9mm? I might have fucked that up because I've had a couple beverages, but I'm familiar with the Sig Sauer arms. I, I'm aware of They the, have fucking guns. I know. I'm aware of the, the safety precautions, and that's, that's a word I use very loosely, when I embark on an airplane trip. I know what I'm getting into. You don't want to fuck around, bro. No. You want to sit there, get read your fucking magazine, go to sleep, get where you need to go, and I'm leave. guilty of when I used to be a very... Uh, you were uh, a jet-setting motherfucker back in your time. Yeah, I, I, I was guilty of, like, you know, fucking horrors in the... Ba in the what do they call that? Mile High Club? Mile High Club. I was I don't know how I did that, but I was able to do that. I was Not with skinny I, jeans. I know. <laughs> I was guilty of, you know, fucking snorting uh, devil's dandruff yeah. in those bathrooms. I used to get fucked up on the way to Brazil or well, fucking again, Thailand. The, the, the to at the time, the, I'm pretty sure the security measures were lax. Well, well, where you, you can do, you can get away yeah, with that kind of stuff. Now you got air marshals on the flight, okay? You got pilots with fucking Sig Sauer, fucking nine millimeter, in some cases, 40 calibers. You got uh, uh, pilots using lock procedures on the, the cockpit where no one is admitted. Once they're even, once they're on flight, even stewardesses, if I, if any of you are pilots, please, please fill in the call in. But I believe even stewardesses have, they don't have access to, yeah. you know what I mean? Like they literally have like this really strict procedure. And yet, this Malaysian flight, like these pilots, they're, it's already known that, you know, they were bringing in these Australian chicks and trying to pick up on <laughs> yeah. them. And then, I mean, so it, it, it's, it, it sounds to me overall, it's just the whole, I mean, again, it's a lapse of judgment, it's a lapse of, secu lapse of security, and a lack of accountability to where everyone was just like shrugging their shoulders, like, oh, I don't know what happened. The fucking plane got lost. Yeah, it's Come not on. it's not like that Rod Serling Twilight Zone episode of Odyssey of the Odyssey of that. Pl remember when yeah, I remember that yeah. one. As a matter of fact, this is gonna be that's great. a great that's a great episode. Yeah, one maybe, of the best. Maybe they're fucking you know lost somewhere in the skies, you know, hovering fucking New York. Uh, it's like some like low back rent in the BC area. Yeah, that, it's like some low rent Gilligan's Island shit right now. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to sound like an asshole. It's tragic. Uh, no, it's really. The end result is this: is that the sharks are well fed. Do we still have that Jaws music? <laughs> Sharks are well fed. The sharks are well fed. They, they're chilling until what? Summertime. 
They are good. They are fucking good. Oh, that was a me buffet. Can you imagine? <laughs> We haven't eaten it long all day. Yeah. We haven't eaten all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's, all let's, right, let's, let's, let's digress. Let's all digress. Right. Did you hear about this? This is really interesting. Uh, God, I hope I'm in order. I'm so fucked up. Yeah. Did you hear about this cat that held its owner's prisoner? Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, I believe this happened in Portland. I'll, I'll look up. Uh, I'll Portland? Look up, I'll look up the facts right now, but let's play that sound bite. Hands up, Jenny. Oh, my God. The cat. The cat from Portland. Portlandia. Yeah, hi. I have a kind of a particular emergency here. Um, my cat attacked our uh, seven-month-old child, and I kicked the button, the cat in the rear, and it has went off over the edge, and we um, aren't safe around the cat. It's a very large Himalayan. And we're trapped in our bedroom. He won't let us out of our door. Okay, does the, the child need medical attention? No, no, he's just got scratches on his forehead. But the cat, we don't know what to do about the cat. He's gone, he's trying to attack us. He's very, 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 very hostile. So, and if I, when I leave out the bedroom to let the police in, I'm going to have to fight this cat. Hang on just a second. And when you said the cat is large, how large? Uh, 22 pounds, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think that the cat is... He's got kind of a uh, history of violence. He's kind of a violent cat already. <laughs> but he's really bad right now. He's, char he's charging us. Oh. He's Dude, door, I can hear this guy's testicles shrink by each <laughs> sentence. Can you tell he's a puffer? Oh, my God. Watch, listen. My God. Okay, can you tell that that dude's a fucking marijuana smoker? Jesus. You know, like, I, what's, <laughs> what is the state? Was it is it Colorado that has the recreational marijuana? Colorado and Washington. Portland okay. is in that Oregon. Are rake, that they're raking in all these tax dollars because all the potheads are just coming out and buying the smoke. So and, this is in Portland. This is in Portland. Okay, uh, preface this. Uh, Portland and Seattle go back and forth between high heroin use, like one of the highest heroin addiction rates in the country, and suicide. There's a little backstory context for you, kid. Okay, well, you know, you're you're a, you're you make no uh, this ain't a secret. You love marijuana. You, I love you it. indulge it. You absolutely. You, puff, you know what I mean? As you, as dude, I, I can never get so high as to be afraid of a fucking cat. Dude, that cat would be dead <laughs> if it scratched my kid. If I had one in traffic, no remorse. Get another one. Fuck that. I'm, I'm being held hostage by How a How fucking lame cat. is that? Dude? How lame is that? Yeah, it was Oregon. It happened in Oregon. Yeah, or Portland, Oregon. Jesus Here's Christ. the deal. You can hear that this dude, like, seven dollar Mike, take note, because I, I caught you the other day trying to puff some fucking smoke here. I mean, <laughs> I you're, you you're him, already retarded as fuck. I thought you'd come kicking a cat in the ass. <laughs> Here's the deal. If you have a fucking cat that, it, first of all, it, I hate cats. You know, I'm, I'm you not know, a cat guy either. Yeah. But if you have a cat, and it starts attacking you, that motherfucking cat is not only going to get his ass kicked, it's going to be fed to some... What was the fuck up that I did last week, you guys, that Caitlin was making fun of me? I said pet bulls, and you guys are like, a pet bull? Yeah, you said, yeah, pet bulls. Pit bulls. Like, pet bull, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. God, I swear to God, that this East LA accent. I know, jeez. If a cat attacks the fuck out of me, it's going to be fed to a pet bull, man. You know, notice, this, this would never, ever happen here. Never. <laughs> it would never happen in East LA. It would never happen anywhere in California. Nine one one. Can I take your emergency? Yeah, my pussy is violent. Yeah. Hey, it homes. has a history of uh, violence. Hey, my my cat's getting crazy, Holmes. I can't control it, man. I just I need help. <laughs> <laughs> I need help. I can't say. make this shit up. Little, I can't little, make it up. Little boots is going out of control, Holmes. I need help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. You know, last week you weren't here, Lost Johnny. You're a big fucking pussy. Oh, the fucking the uh, uh, suck. suck on this. Yeah. Oh. Last week you were bitching about fucking the uh, LA Marathon. We had uh, the Black Diablo Negro fucking Caton here. You know, him and his whole chaos. Oh boy. But this was interesting. Sound like I miss another storm. <laughs> yeah, it was great. This was interesting, man. Uh, also, Dia de los Muertos was here. They were yep. guests, and they were very gracious enough to invite me. And Subdor Mike, 
The Salvador Mike's like a tick. He just sticks in, so, you know, you can't get rid of him. <laughs> hey, kid. <laughs> um, Funny seeing you at the bus stop. They were filming a video. And so they were very gracious to invite me to be participating in the video. Now, before we begin this, this is very interesting. It just goes to show you the, the, <laughs> the lack of reality that I'm in. I assume they mentioned that, you know, David Vincent from Morbid Angel was going to be playing. This, this was for a song called, Infi uh, what is it, Infierno, Cantina de Infierno, which is Bar from Hell. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong about that, but whatever. Anyways, they mentioned that David Vincent was going to be involved. He was going to be playing the bartender. And that they were going to have some very attractive girls. And so I pictured that it was going to be kind of like a Goodfellas type of scene. Like all of us hanging out at the bar. Like yeah. a bar in hell. Then I saw the images during the day. Because obviously they started filming this during the day. And do we have that image up? Okay. As you can see, we have an image of... It's I, I want to see this. It's David Vincent and like some very attractive girls at the bar. Right? Which one of them is uh, uh, Rosa Arias, the, the new lead singer. Okay. I like how you got to get up a little bit. That's good, man. Sorry. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Anyways. Progress. Now, let me show you. Why don't you get up again? Let me show you what it really was. Look at who Look at who I was dealing with in the video shoot. Do you see that image right there? There you go. <laughs> Can you see that? Oh, hell yeah. Now, Salvador Mike, try your best to, you know. I can't do it now. Come on. You can do it. <laughs> we got there. And obviously, oh my what, God. what I... What I pictured was not the case. When we got there, we were, like, supposed to be involved, like, in a live setting as fans. Right. Okay, so, like, they set up a stage and they were playing. So, it, was, it wasn't nothing like I pictured. Like, I'd be kicking it with next to some sexy chicks and stuff. No, not bon, even. Bon Jovi, it is not. But what was disturbing was <laughs> is that aside from being, like, okay, I pictured when they had asked us to be there that everybody involved would be friends affiliated with the band. But I guess they really went all out. Just a cattle call. They had, they had like those stand-ins that get paid. Yeah. First of all, once I found out these misfits got paid, it was <laughs> oh, shit. But my God, Lost Johnny. There was that dude. Like, we still have that image, right? Of the dude with the fucking... I don't want to see it again. That's just disturbing. Uh, okay, well, that was the image of Kate. <laughs> there was a Kate lookalike, which we have up now. Oh, boy. But can you go back to like the white dude right. with the guy from Hollywood? That the, That guy. <laughs> I thought that was a girl. Uh, no, that's no. a guy. <laughs> and, he's, and he laughed like this. <laughs> like fucking doll, like a dolphin from hell. You know what he looks like? Did you ever watch um, The Princess Bride? <laughs> no, but that sounds oh, disturbing no. already. Dude. Dude, that, just to hear that and <laughs> to put in that face, <laughs> fucking damage. Okay, God. now, not only that, Lost Johnny, but they have, like, what, Mike, you know, stand in here. They have, like, a cross-eyed guy. And, like, what we were supposed to do was, like, you know, we'd supposed to be headbanging and fist. I mean, I'm sitting there going, I'm fucking over 40. I don't fist bang and headbang at shows. You know the way I rock out. I know, dude. You know? But, like, this dude's laughter was disturbing. <laughs> This sounds like a fucking Adams Family freak show. It was a show. fucking video shoot from hell. Look at the screen on the TV. Uh, oh. oh, my oh, God. Oh, 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 yeah. That's horrifying. That is very accurate. Okay, now, <laughs> don't get hell. me wrong. I don't want to sound like an asshole or nothing. I appreciate Dia de los Muertos being kind enough to invite us over and, sure. and to be part of the video shoot. But really? <laughs> Really? You had to deal with that guy? I got to deal with, no, guys. Guys. We had, let's not forget, we had, the cro we had the cross-eyed fuckhead. <laughs> then we had that fucking, that. Asian guy. <laughs> Don't forget. Oh, oh, there was like a, a there was like a Down syndrome Asian guy who was talking shit. I go, I gotta take a picture. He's like, what are you gonna do that shit on me? <laughs> and I, I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know who I am. You listen to my show. He's like, no, you're an asshole. <laughs> all right, all right, I, all right. I missed out. I'm all sorry. Right. Yeah, it, it, thank you, but my video, <laughs> my video career is over. <laughs> Mind you, Mike was all cool with it, right? <laughs> it was so disturbing that I had to go to Tommy's after and, oh, and be gluttonous. <laughs> Soothe your sorrows and chili cheeseburgers. All right, we got a great show for you today. We do. I'm, I'm really excited. The very lovely Sarah Timms will be here. Um, for those of you that are familiar with this very lovely young lady, she is so hypnotic, man. And I say this. You, you know that it's very rare. Extremely I, talented. Extremely talented. Not only that, I mean, just the fact that she can hypnotize and seduce me into her whole web of like dark macabre music. Yeah. 
But what's interesting is, is and why I really respect this artist is because she does not in any way, shape, or form go into that whole sex angle like all these other fucking chicks, you yeah. know, with the fucking double F brass and... You know, no, she's this, a real deal, man. This is a real artist, and her vocal talent is really awesome. I For mean, those, just the stuff what she does with, uh, or we know from the beginning with the uh, Black Math Horseman, Horseman, great band, and what she is doing now with Eyes of Gemini, amazing. And now what she's doing with Black Mare, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to be speaking with her. She's going to be with us here today. So let's get into it. You're listening to the very manic Jimmy Cap Show. Many have tried to imitate. And none can fit into skinny jeans. <laughs> Let me start with that. Many have tried to replicate, but there's only one true show that really captures the true integrity of the underground. Thank you for giving us that title. Hands off, Jenny. Hit it. Malaysian officials say they are now investigating the identities of four passengers, two of whom were flying on stolen passports. Now more than 30 hours overdue, few can doubt that something terrible has happened to the plane. We have met all day.
you've seen occur inside the cockpit of this plane is no reflection on the aircraft or the crew. It's a safe, well-engineered, perfectly designed machine. And the men you've just met are a trained, cool, highly efficient team. The problem is simply that the plane is going too fast. And there is nothing within the realm of knowledge, or at least logic, to explain it. Unbeknownst to passenger and crew, this aeroplane is heading into an uncharted region, well off the beaten track of commercial travelers.
supply of misinformation is Mr. Know-it-all. All right. It cannot get any more heavier than that. That is some heavy ass shit. Yeah, Lost Johnny, what did we hear? Oh, man. We just heard this band Conan. Heavy like Conan. Crown of Talons from the record Blood Eagle. Holy shit, was that fucking heavy. And before that, we started the set with another heavy band. Like, I gotta fucking give them the breakdown. St. Vitus, Burial at Sea. If that's not the fucking one of the heaviest songs ever, I don't know what is. But we started the set at the top of the show, and I'll break it down like such. The Body, a big fan in you, Jimmy Cabs. Uh, the name of that song is The Ebb and Flow of Tides in a Sea of Ash from the record Master We Perish. After that, we heard one of my favorite bands from Oxnard, The Fucking Wrath from the record The Season of Evil, Old Man and the Sea. By the way, a very cool book as written by Ernest Hemingway. After that, we heard Lock Up. What? Okay. <laughs> what the fuck something, is that? Something fell. Uh, after that, we heard Lock Up, High Tide in a Sea of Blood from the record Violent Reprisal. After that, we heard Jello Biafra and the Melvin. That's a great record, kiddies. Um, from their record Never Breathe What You Can't See, the name of that song is called The Lighter Side of Global Terrorism. Oh, man. It's heavy, and it's about to get heavier right now. All right. Jesus. We have ghosts in the machine. I know, dude. This is like... We might not have been talking shit about that whole Malaysian airplane thing. Now we brought that shit over here. <laughs> hey, we'd like fuck ourselves. Yeah, between you and the skinny jeans and this fucking airplane shit, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, here. I do. All right. Well, before we bring in the lovely Sarah Timms of Black Mar, let's see if we can fix that. <laughs> yeah. We haven't had technical difficulties here in the uh, studio. Yeah, hands up, Jenny's like, fuck you guys. Yeah, Jenny's like, you bunch of dicks. Yeah. All right, here's the deal. This is very interesting because... It is very rare, it's very rare that I have an artist, a female artist, that not only can captivate my attention and mesmerize and literally be so seductive where like it magnetized me, Lost Johnny. And it has nothing to do with the sex appeal. Now, let me be very, let me be very forward. Uh, Sarah Timms is an extremely lovely young lady, but it's the music. Absolutely. And you have been there with me where Absolutely. we have been enchanted. Absolutely. Now, we have seen her with Black Meth Horseman. Awesome. We have seen her with Ides of Gemini. Awesome. And we are about to see her with Black Mars. So without further ado, hands up, Jenny. Can you cue that music? Salvador and Mike, bring in uh, the lovely Sarah Tennis, please. All right, Mike, right on point. Look at this guy. Wow, look how lovely you are. Hi, Sarah. Can you sit down on seat one there, please? Awesome intro you? music, by the way. Okay. How very appropriate. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me turn this. Kind of game show, kind of enchanting forest. Like it's, it. it's bewitching music. That's very bewitching. Okay, so... Just no one twink twinkle their nose. How are you, Sarah? Good, how are you? Good. Good. You're are you? First of all, you're very, very, very lovely. Thank you for being... Uh, on the very man at Jimmy Cam show. Thank, Thank you for you joining for us. Having me. Um, let's let's begin. Now, obviously, we've had you here on the show. Uh, our my audience is familiar with you with uh, with Ides of Gemini, which is a band that we really really enjoy. Uh, as we shared with you before, we're huge fans, and this is where I discovered you with Black Math Horseman. Mm -hmm. But Black Bar, this is interesting. Why don't you tell us? A little bit about Black Bar. Black Mare. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I already fucked up. So, Black Mare is my solo project. Um, and it was just, uh, well, where should I start? I don't, it's such a wide Yeah, question. this is interesting. Now, if memory serves me correct, this project was before Ides of Gemini, correct? Um, it, it actually Tell started, us a little bit about it the started at the same exact time, pretty much. Um, let me think about this. Ides of Gemini started uh, from w when the first European Black Meth Horseman tour got canceled by that volcano, the Icelandic volcano, whatever year that was. Um, and then right around that same time, um, my best friend and I, Maja Dau, were putting on a winter solstice ritual. And she suggested that I perform a solo song. And then I said, well, why don't I do a solo song and also do a song with, with an Ides of Gemini stuff we're working on? 
Um, and so Isaac Gemini was just me and Jay at the time. Right. So that was the first song that we wrote and performed. And then I wrote a song, uh, and I, I wasn't called Black Mare at that point, but she named me Black Mare for that ritual. Um, and then I did that song for for um, the ritual. And then I was asked to play live and then put out an album. And, and that's how it became a, a real thing. Now, this is very interesting. It's very rare that an artist, a female artist, can not only retain my attention, but have my respect. Mm -hmm. I'm being very forward and very honest with you. I, I, one of the things that I despise, especially here in Los Angeles, are are female oriented and I don't mean no no disrespect but by all means I'm going to be honest one of the things that I despise the most is female artists who go beyond their sexuality to try to get that attention and I I, I know that it's been capitalized and mark marketized before but I just find it in 2013 and 14 just kind of like obsolete and, and lame right I also find it to really be so much of a distraction from the lack of true talent right when lost johnny and i stumbled upon you one of the things that we really both collectively agreed on was aside from just how talented you were is just how basically you can entrance your audience without the so-called you know extremities of a female front person in other words your vocal talent your musical talent just overall when you're playing your music it is very enchanting how do you feel about that and do you recognize that and how do you feel about mm -hmm. not to put you on the spot but how do you feel about other female fronted bands that differ from that well um for me musically it's always been the most important thing that the music is is forefront front and center um and if you have a, a woman being very sexual as your front person, that's going to be, that's going to get the most attention. That gets the most attention in our society anyway, you know, all the time. It's almost like too easy. Like I couldn't do that. It's just like, you know, it, I want it to be the music. It's almost like egotistical. I want the music to be good enough and the music to get enough credit and to get credit as a musician a singer and a creator, not for being some sexy chick, you know? So you do that I, very well, by the way. Thanks. Um, so that's that's I guess where it all started from, and then other than that, I'm I'm a, I'm kind of modest anyway. So it's just not my nature to be all. You know. I think I think if you don't mind me being so forward, I think you're very lovely. Thanks. And the fact that you don't fall into those antics really makes it even more quote unquote sexually appealing. But again, that's not what you portray what you portray is true musicianship. And let me be even more forward with you, which I'm going to get embarrassing now, Lost Johnny. As opposed to the jeans you're wearing? <laughs> Heard about this. By the way, <laughs> if you're over 40, no peace. Don't wear skinny jeans. I'm so embarrassed to stand up in front of you. But anyways, um, when you play, you have a very, very, uh, what I like to say, intoxicating effect on your audience. Are you aware of this? Well, I've been told that. So, so yes. I would almost compare it. I would almost compare it to being like somewhat of a opiate. Yeah, I don't know where that comes from. I mean, I really, I never tried to have that. I guess it's probably the, the best thing one could have playing the kind of music that I have. It's also better um, the fact that she's not conscious of it because then she would. I, I mean, I'm speculating that it would be a pose, it would be a front, like she would kind of go into the act of being no she's she's real man one of, the, one of the things that i really appreciate about you sarah is not only your true musicianship and your artistic uh, uh credibility but it's like when you're off the stage you are really a very approachable very lovely young lady you don't have any of the stigma of los angeles with the attitude or none of that you're very a very pleasant person but what i like most about you is that when you're on stage and i'm a very hard person to please I've seen you throughout your different projects, and I find that they all have one thing in common. They're very enchanting. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited about this. I know it's not a new project, but your solo project, because mm -hmm. I have not seen Black... Please help me with the pronunciation. Black mare, like a horse, a female black horse. Black mare. Yeah. <laughs> now, the one thing that this project has in common with Eyes of Gemini is that you share the stage with Jay Bennett, correct? Yeah who is also your significant other. He is. How does that creative duo 
come to play with this project compared to Eyes of Gemini? Because I don't want to say that they're the same because they're not. Energy-wise, it's different. But right. explain to me. Uh, well, for this project, um, Jay has not been a creative part of it yet in Black Mare. Um, I wrote, really? Wow. Yeah, I wrote everything um, except for some additional guitar on two songs on the album by Brian Tulau. Um, I, I wrote and recorded uh, every instrument on the album. Wow. Um, and so it was only when I decided to put a live band together that I got Jay involved. And so Jay's playing bass, actually. Now, if you don't mind me being so intrusive, does, is he cool with that? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, as opposed to like, what? In other no. words, leave, leave me alone. This is my band. I'm writing this material. No, he's great. He lets me uh, boss him around. <laughs> It's great. <laughs> I love it. Because in Ides of Gemini, <laughs> it's a lot more collaborative in Ides of Gemini. And it's definitely, he's definitely a, a visionary in Ides of Gemini, you know. We all play parts in that. But um, in Black Mare, it's like my vision. He's like, okay, I'm going to help you bring your vision to life. He will be writing on the new material. But um, I got to tell you, I, both of you really bring out like, because I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but I'm a very despicable human being. I'm very angry and very bitter at my age. <laughs> Both of you really do bring out like a very good humanitarian side of me. And I really like when I see you, especially socially. I mean, it, it, it really is like a very positive couple. But when I see you play, and I'm looking forward to seeing you play with this new project, it, it, it just seems very comfortable, very easy. You know, no static, no problems or nothing. And especially being in Los Angeles where, like, when you're in a band with your significant other, there's always that egotistical conflict. Right. I mean, that doesn't come to play with your band, correct? It doesn't. And I really think it's mostly because of Jay. He's incredibly humble. And, I mean, he'll even say, he'll probably even say it today, that he started writing Ides of Gemini music for me to sing to. That was very yeah. impressive when you revealed that the last time. Yeah, ever. so he's always trying to put me in the forefront. Like, he's, so, of course, I love it, you know? So there's no competition. I mean, I'm not trying. I think also he does that because I'm hesitant to be in the forefront, and, and he sees that, and he's like, you need to be in the forefront. So he kind of actually helps push me out there a little bit. Wow, that's interesting. I have a question. Just, I mean, just to be devil's advocate, sure. is this? Uh, would you ever consider a project or working with someone where the creative aspects was it was had more tension, where it wasn't easy, where it wasn't well? Uh, I mean, not to say like to put yourself in a dire situation, right. but it's like it's it, it would be harder to work with someone that you obviously want to work with, right? I. You know what I mean? I did that in, in Black Mad Horseman. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> is that why that band no longer exists? I mean, if you don't mind me being so Yeah, forward. there was a there was a lot of tension in creating it, working to create the Was new it just album. too 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 much creativity and too much talent or Um I mean there's a lot of things going on in that band. That band is musically. a very talented band. There are a lot of things going on. Uh there was one of the main collaborate collaborators. I mean, we all were creative in that band, but one of the main people was um, uh, unable to ever finish a song. It was never perfect. Like, it was always changing every rehearsal. Um, and that I, I relate was, to that. There was, a lot of, there was a lot of tension with that part because he's a creative genius for sure, but he just wouldn't finish anything. So were you being uh, like that alpha female, uh, like, hurry up, hurry up, it's great, let's just no, stop. I was the tyrant. I was horrible in that band. <laughs> so, And I've learned not to do that anymore from that experience because I almost ruined friendships from, you know, how... Is, is that why, like, your Eyes of Gemini project and Black Mare, yeah. there's, like, this very calming, very sedative effect? Is it because the energy is just... Way different. Yeah, I, I got rid of my tyrannical energy and my a lot of my anger and trying to force things just because it was making me miserable. It was terrible. Ah. It was not a good experience. Wow, that's so. very revealing because I would never think that you could... Every time I see you or I'm around you, it's a very pleasant, intoxicating, positive environment. Well, to yes. be fair, you know, th there's a difference between the art and the artist yeah. and how... Those two, those two things don't always are are parallel, so it's very I mean, true. That's something to consider. Yeah, anyone who works with me creatively will have different opinions <laughs> of me.
Do you like working as a solo artist better than working collectively with the project band? Um, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I like it better. I liked it. I liked being able to create an album on my own, at my own pace, without having to depend on anybody else. That was extremely gratifying. But not playing with a band is, is kind of lonely. I mean, it was, it was cool to prove that I could do all that stuff, but I would much rather collaborate. Um, now that I've got a band together, I, I want to write with them. It's more of like a, a family team environment. Really? Uh, and when you're when you start writing with a band, I'm saying. I mean, the Black Mare, the beginning of Black Mare was definitely just me, you know, solo hermiting out in my room doing everything my way, which was really gratifying because I always <laughs> I tried for so many years to like push Black Mad Horseman like do this now, this must happen. And um it wouldn't happen. So it felt really good to be able to have that kind of control, honestly. Um but the feeling you get in a room from working together with other musicians, collaborating, um, is better than, than anything else, really. It can't compare to a solo effort, in my opinion. Wow, that's very impressive for you to say that, especially in a city where, like, you know, being egotistical is so addictive. Yeah, it is. I, I think that's why, I think that's why this record, Black Mare, really just holds this really true intoxicating but yet humble type of vibe to it where like once you put it on i mean it's just very enticing it's very funny because this album transcends all genres mm. it appeals to everybody That's good. which is very rare yeah very very rare i mean especially in this city where people are so hung up on titles and stuff this is really a very pleasing very sedative yet dark and this is what I'm going to get to on the next segment because this is a very dark vibe to this record. Not to incline, not to in any way, shape, or form portray it as a, a negative thing, but right. there's a very dark, mystique, very mysterious element to it, which really appeals to me because I'm a dark motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I mean, it also ties into the show that uh, Black Mare is playing. With yeah, why don't we Man mention this? Light this is System and Mossbreaker. I mean, Mutoid Man, I mean, that features uh, Ben, who's a drummer for Converge, huge fan of. And uh, Caleb from Caven, another band I'm uh, quite Steve. fan of. Oh, sorry, Steve, Steve from uh, Caven. So, I mean, just those two chemistries, that's going to be awesome. This too. is a very um, interesting lineup here, I got to tell you. By the way, let's mention this. This is going to be happening the 19th at the Echo Warehouse, of course. Now, now help me pronunciate this. Mutoid Man? Yeah. Yes. Light System? Of course, Black Mare and Mossbreaker. This is going on at the Echo. This is on the 19th. Make sure you get your tickets. Make sure you go and see what I have already known, which is the hypnotic and seductive Black Mare with Sarah Timms. All right, let's get into some music. Hands off, Jenny. Let's play some Black Mare. Hit it. <laughs>
Boss Johnny, what did we hear? We heard Black Mare, the song Blind One, from the record, 7-inch demo? Uh, record, album. Uh, album. Field of the most? Host. 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 Cabs, this is when you fucked up. This is when you can't write. Is my penmanship really that yeah, bad? It really, really? It's, it's not the best. You get I a mean, C-. minus. Jesus right. Christ, dude. We yeah, both went to the same me. school, but fucking hell, man. This is what happens when you have pot-smoking teachers at LA Unified School. That's true. All right. This is a new record that just came out. Number one, how do you feel about recording with this project compared to Ides of Gemini? Well, it was only me recording with the exception of two songs on the album, which I had Brian Tulo add some additional guitar onto. Um, <clears throat> so it was, a, it was a way different experience. Um, for one thing, it was more like a, maybe making a painting because I would just start with one layer, you know, like a little guitar line, and then I would add more guitar or I would add a vocal, add some drums, add some bass, and then it turned into a whole song. Um, and I could work really at my own pace um, continuously uh, in my comfort zone, in my house. You is, know? It, is it really comfortable when you're recording and writing and, and coming up for yourself, is it? Yeah, well, it's comfortable on my own when I'm doing it. In a studio, I'm not very comfortable because <laughs> I have to work with an engineer, maybe a producer, somebody else where I have to share creative, you know, creative opinions with and differences. Uh, so recording Black Mare, it was completely everything up to me. It was like I was completely getting to delve into my own imaginary world and, and make it manifest in the music. Um, so it was it was pretty interesting. Did you find it stressful compared to like recording with Eyes of Gemini where you're in a band and it's a band environment? It was stressful only because I had to write more th more parts, I guess. But at the time, I always love exploring uncharted territory. So it, I still felt like, you know, drum programming especially was like uncharted territory for me, largely. And so I kept getting better and better at it. So I, I felt really good about that. But it, it was just challenging. Um, and I mean, that's really the, that was the hardest thing, I guess. Having a nicer microphone would have been nice. <laughs> now, let's introduce our next guest here. This is Jay Bennett. How are you doing there, man? Very well. How are you, sir? Am I close enough to this thing? Uh, you need to be a little bit closer. Okay. Well, this is this is very... I, I hope you don't mind me getting very personal. Oh. It's, it's commonly known, it's been revealed here, actually, that not only are you in a relationship together, but that you also, when you write music, you incorporate... Sarah's vocal tones into your writing. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I write the basic foundation and the arrangement of the song with her voice in mind. That's very, that, you know what? That's very, it's very rare, number one, that I'm mature, but that's very commendable, man. It really is. Because we're living in an age now where, like, to be able artistically to admit that opens yourself up to ridicule. What is... What needs to be noted, though, is the fact that not only are you a duo together as in your personal lives, but as musicians. So as musicians and as artists, I really commend you for that because you're really kind of setting the foundation, but yet opening up all avenues for Sarah to take it to wherever she feels she needs to do. Right, yeah. Does this philosophy in writing also work with Black Mare? Well, she she writes everything for Black Mare. I have, I got nothing. To, I have nothing to do with it. She writes everything, plays everything. I just uh, am I am I not being loud enough? Um, I just play live. I play bass lines that she wrote. Um, like when we play on Wednesday, I'll be the bass player. Um, how, how do you feel about that? Is that a relief? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and plus, and plus, I get to play bass. You know, um, it's a lot of fun. I I never play. I've never played bass before we started this. So. Um, I'm having a blast. You know, I got, I got to tell you, I really admire both of you, not only as artists, but socially. When I see you both, you both really, really have like this very positive, very, what's the word I'm looking for here, Johnny? Like just very positive, very sedative 
energy about yourselves. We seem sedated yeah. when you <laughs> run into us. It's very rare. For, it's very you know, rare. Hanging for, out with them is like chewing on, you know, listen, I'm, like like it in. I'm a very on, angry right? motherfucker. Man. <laughs> it's very rare for me to be like, oh, wow, that's cool. It's very also very rare for me to give praise to people. But when, when I see you play on stage, though, it works so well. It really does. It really gels so well. And this is one of the reasons why I'm so intrigued with this new project, which actually is not new, as you mentioned before. But for you to go solo, Sarah, do you any way, shape, or form think about the interpretation of Black Mare compared to Ides of Gemini? Um, I, I do because people have asked me about it. Um, to me, it's it's apples and oranges, really. It's incredibly incredibly different i mean how is it different um well for one i'm playing the guitar and i play way differently than jay plays you know i pluck a little string here and then uh, you know I, I hardly ever play like a full chord i don't play riffs so jay's playing like riffs generally you know he's uh jay's like a guitar player i just sort of find my way around like it's like walking down a little path and then I come up with a song, you know, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to play many chords. So I just figure it out with open tunings. Um, but I feel like the overall feeling, even though black mirror is dark and, and it gets heavy, it's more like heavy atmosphere. Um, whereas with eyes of Gemini, I feel like there's more concrete stuff you can grab onto as far as like the guitar work goes for sure. Um, my vocals are different too. Um, well, especially now, the way that Ides of Gemini is moving, my vocals are more, more forceful than on Black Mare. There's a lot more room for vulnerability in Black Mare and simplicity um, as far as my, my process goes, how I write the songs. I'm glad that you actually opened up this window for me because this record really does seem more darker. What influences you... And what influences this record? Because it really does seem more, in, and I'm not saying that in a negative sense, but it really just seems more on a darker side. Yeah, I was, uh, well, I was going through a lot of sadness at that time through um, letting go of, of things from my past um, and old relationships that had died um, and old parts of myself that had died. And How do you do that? Because I still find myself being like a faceless stalker. Right? <laughs> Whoops. Cab's inside voice, dude. Don't see that sorry, shit. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, you have to hang out in it for a while, and that's what I did in the album. And then you just get sick of it, and you're like, get it off of me. Get, get this old skin off. I want to move forward. So uh, that's how I do it, was through music or creativity. Um, but yeah, so it, it did feel there was a lot of sadness and frustration and, and anger Um that I found paralleled in a lot of sort of mythological and, and esoteric things I was reading about over the time I was creating the song. So I like to use those things um, to create larger mythological worlds that using archetypes that are already there usually to create um, archetypal worlds and explorations where like I'm a character, you know what I mean? And so, so that's how I evolve personally is like I see myself going through this Usually it's visual because I'm a very visual person. So a visual experience of the song. You know what I mean? Now there seems to be like a sort of like really dark but mesmerizing form of witchery in involved in this record. Am I correct on that? I think so. I mean, I Please think... Please elaborate. Um, well, I mean, once again, it's not something I've ever... Very mystical. Yeah. It's not something I've ever tried to do, but I do feel like... Um, what I relate to is a lot of like underworld gods and goddess sort of energy. Um, that space of the shadow self um, is where I find myself drawn to. And I feel like that's sort of the most work that I have to do on myself. Um, so that's kind of the territory I just always end up in. Um, it's pretty dark down there. You know what though? It's, it's Lost Johnny, correct me if I'm wrong. Dude, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I mean, it, it, it's very, very, very refreshing for me to be able to experience a band that really does not fall into the genres. Right. You know? Yeah. But yet they capture and have the same characteristics of what you would 
especially being an underground extreme music fan, would partake to. The music is very, very, very articulate. And what I mean by that is, is you could dissect the lyrical aspect of it, the musical aspect of it, and it really brings you a full satisfaction once you digest it. Right. Well, it's also a reminder, too, that music can be heavy and powerful without having to be aggressive and being exactly. overtly crushing. Like, yes, you can tune down the D and have some, like, crazy fucking rig, or, you know, you can be just as heavy plucking that one string and holding it and sustaining it, and that's equally powerful. Yeah, I got to agree. For those of you that want to experience what I already know, this Wednesday, the Echo 319, you are playing with Mutoid Man, Mutoid Man? Light System and Moss Breaker. Make sure you go see Block Mayor. This is happening at the Echo. This is going to be a really great show. This Wednesday. What time are you playing? Oh, I think it's 9.30? 9.45. Something 945. Like that. We're, we're the second of four. So I think it's Moss Breaker yeah. and then us and then Light System. Yeah, this is very important to document because everybody yeah. is like on fucking lax time here in L.A. Yeah. You, you got to get there. And make sure you see Black Mare. This is incredible. For those of you that are fans of Black Math Horseman or Ides of Gemini, as we've mentioned, this is... You're just a fan of fucking good music. Yeah, but as we mentioned, this is Sarah Timms' solo project. Does it bother you when, when people portray or describe you as the solo project? Because you don't really seem to have... Any egotistical, very, you know, conceited type of thing. Does it bother you to say that this is your solo project? No. It feels great. Does it really? Oh, yeah. You have that whole Stevie Nicks kind of vibe? Like, hey, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. She was, like no, a very, no, no, no. She was he, very confident, man. Yeah. Like, hey, I mean, this is me. It's my shit. You know, not not so much to the point that I named it Sarah Timms. You know, I still called something <laughs> else. So it's still, it's still uh, I, I try to have it be embodying like a spiritual or higher self archetype that I represent rather than just myself here on earth. So, um, that answer is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just about, this is my song and this is how I'm going to play it. And me, 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 me. That is also very refreshing, by the way. The fact that you are not egotistical. I mean, in a city of fucking Jesus. In a, in a city of, Hamonas. in a city of skinny jeans. Yeah, don't, don't get don't get me started on that. <laughs> All right, let's take a little time capsule back and let's listen to some prior bands that you're involved in. Which, again, I, I must say, this is very impressive. It's also very impressive to note that not only have you elevated from your other projects independently. In other words, they all don't sound or incorporate the same, but they still capture that very hypnotic, very addictive factor of you. So, hands off, Jenny. Hit it. And uh, what line of business might you be in? God's business. Which finding? Which finding? Oh, that's nice. That's very nice.
Johnny. All right. Lost Johnny. What did we hear there? Oh, man. Heavy, 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 heavy shit. Black Math Horseman. Tyrant from their one only but still awesome record. Wilet? Wilet? Wilt. 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 Jesus, I'm fucking up things left and right. That's actually my fault, Counselor. Yeah, I won't blame you on that one. Thank you. Uh, and after that, we heard the Ice Gemini, the Vessel, and the Stake from their record, the Disruption Writ. Awesome shit. You know, again, the versatility, that is what needs to be really addressed there because uh, I'm sure you probably dealt with this before, right? People assuming that your different projects are all the same collectively. Um, Have you ever had that? No, I haven't. Actually, oh, no, I, feel like I, feel, I, I feel like everyone <laughs> does their research before they talk to me about it anyway. Maybe there's people out there that do, but I don't. they don't talk to me. Now, this is interesting. With Black Mare, correct me if I'm wrong, but this involves Black Math Horseman musicians? It does now, yeah. Talk I mean, me the, the recording did, did not... Actually, the recording, two songs did. Um, Brian Tula recorded on a song called Fighting Birds and a song called Ashlar on the album. Um, he added guitar. Um, so... Uh, when I recorded the album, I didn't have uh, an idea of when I would actually win or if I would turn it into a live project. Um, but when I was asked to play a live show, um, someone had already volunteered to play drums and said they wanted to play drums with me. And I was like, well, maybe I could maybe I could make it a live band. So I asked Brian because I love playing with him and because he had played guitar on two of the songs anyway. And he was into it. So now he's do doing that. How do you feel about that? Oh, it's playing, playing great. With, I love playing with him. Is it him. comfortable for you? Oh, yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. He's he's collaborating on uh, the new stuff we're writing, too. For Black Mare? For Black Mare. Oh, that's interesting. I yeah. mean, it, it, in a city where there's, like, so much ego and there's so much conflict, especially artistic conflict, it's, yeah. not, it's nice to hear the opposite. We're like, you know what? You could be in a band with someone and then you venture off and you do your own thing. And yet they're still able to not only artistically cooperate with you and, and collaborate, but there's no fucking tension. There's no none of that. He's amazing in that way that um, he really wants to serve the song and he wants to serve the creative vision. He was the same way in Black Man the Horseman um, where he will not ever get offended. If you're like, mm, can you play a little bit more in this style? Can you make it a little more? You know, you can give him any crazy weird description and he'll just try and do it. You know, he doesn't get his ego involved at all. He'll no. tell you, I really like that part. And so, you know, he'll be like, I would like to keep it, but if you don't want to, it's fine. Now, with Eyes of Gemini, you guys have actually gone on tour and hit the road, mm -hmm. you know? And as the last time you heard, we mentioned that you've even opened for bands like Ghost. Yeah. What about Black Mare? Are you planning on go on, going on the road? Oh, with, yeah. Really? Definitely. Talk yeah. to me about that. Is there any tours that are coming up? Not so far. I feel like we're still building foundation. I mean, the, the live band has only played, this is going to be our third show, fourth show. Fourth yeah, show. third. It's going to be only our third show, so um, I feel like at the U in the U.S. hardly anybody knows about us because my record's being released in uh, Europe. Actually, it's not even released in the U.S. Um, on is a label. Is that really true? Yeah, well, the, it's the vinyl. Uh, the vinyl. The vinyl is, but there's no PR or anything behind that, so not very many people know about Why it. Why is that? Um, there just hasn't been a label that you know has. There, there was talk with one of them, but I don't really, I, I don't really approach labels. I just wait for them to find me. Um, it, that's how it's worked best for me. So I figure that'll eventually happen and then it will be released in the U.S. Or, or maybe the next album will be released in the U.S. I'm I not sure. I, I fucking okay. love that, Lost Yeah, it's you? the best. Is that also for what? Yeah. Total alpha move. Have you found an audience with Black Mare similar to Ides of Gemini and Black Math Horseman? Um, hmm. Or better yet, you know, have you found uh, an audience despite... Uh, Ida Gemini. Uh, I feel like Ida Gemini fans are actually really open to, to Black Mare. Um, the only thing I noticed was I feel like actually Black Math Horseman fans were, were very fanatical about Black Math Horseman. <laughs> and they, they really were not into. I'm sorry, Jay, other but I do, I do have blown up 8x10s. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're uh, the only they, one. Black Math Horseman were a sight to see, man. It was like, I, you know, musically and visually, there was a lot going on. I mean, yeah, the drummer, we were, Jesus Christ. You know, yeah. Sarah, I don't know if you're going to take this offensively, but I've always found it as an evolution. Like, I, I discovered you with Black Math Horseman. Yeah. Hooked. Then it went on to Eyes of Gemini. Addicted. Then now with Black Bear, it's going... It, I mean, 
I really, really enjoy the fact that artistically you're able to grow from these projects and still have that same captivating, addictive, creative sense towards your audience. In other words, they're not like, oh, okay, well, this is fucking whatever. No, I mean, it just really evolves, and especially artistically, which is what I really admire. Well, And I'm sure, Jay, you have a lot to do with that as well. I have a lot to do with admiring her? Absolutely, man. I, ad- I admire her <laughs> every day. Do you, do you I'm carry, doing it currently right now. Do you carry a sidearm with all the stuff? St- st- <laughs> no, just kidding. But, no, I mean, do you feel that way? Like, you've evolved from all these projects? Oh, and- yeah. I mean, I feel like uh, at its best, I feel like art and music should be a reflection of the people that are playing it and how they're evolving. So if I wasn't evolving, probably my music wouldn't evolve, but... I've certainly evolved a lot and will continue to evolve. Yeah, I really, I really, really like what you're doing with Black Mirror. I mean, uh, uh, another thing that I want to comment on is the fact that the subject matter of your music. Talk to me what lyrically is the inspiration for that. Um, well, Black Mirror uh, probably has been the most personal that I've gotten uh, with my music. Um, with Eyes of Gemini and Black Math Horseman. I'm always discussing my con- lyrical concepts. Um, and with Ides of Gemini, usually Jay will give me a name and then I'll come up with a lyrical concept from the name. You, you know, guys so. work very well together. Mm-hmm. Would that be safe to say? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and separately too, which is maybe interesting. Like I, I, I do my part and then hand it off to her and she does her parts. We don't do much actually together sitting in the same room would you, would you, enough. Would, would you agree that that's kind of rare i mean when was the last time that i've heard of a, a artistic duo that were also romantically involved where they were able to have this very positive productive i mean what was that fleetwood mac well i don't, I don't want to say that that, that, didn't, that, la- that didn't last long that didn't last <laughs> long <laughs> but yeah i don't want to please i don't want to poison this yeah. but i mean no really like do you find it very, very... I'm, I'm speaking to you, Jay. Do you find it very, very refreshing? Do you find it very exciting to be writing material that you know will be for Sarah? Oh, yeah, because I know that, you know, if I'm happy with what I do, whatever she's going to do is going to make it gold like, instantly. There's no... I mean, she doesn't make bad music, so... Yeah. As long as I'm holding up my end, I don't have to worry about her, you know? Is there ever any pressure? Like, oh, fuck, what if she shuts me down with this? Like, oh, oh. That, that happened early on. Like, there were some things, you know, we were kind <laughs> of f- feeling out the musical relationship where I had some ideas, and it was like, well, you know, she's like, oh, that's not going to work. But then slowly I kind of figured out not only what I thought would be good, but also, you know, what she likes. And now it's at the point where I can actually sort of come up with things that I know might, she might not love immediately, but I, I can kind of talk her into doing a he little does. bit. He does. He's done that a lot. And that's, and that's kind of the sweet spot, I think, right now. The things where tell, she, I, I, she wouldn't necessarily think, yeah, I want to do that, but yeah, it works out and ends up being really good stuff. Because he pushes me out of my comfort zone. Like, he'll come does to he me really with, explain oh, that? Yeah, a lot now. Not so much, not as much on the first album, but on the next album, which is coming out in September. Um, he came to me with a lot of things that were more in the, I would say, I would say rock vein. And I always tend to stray away from anything rock. Why? Uh, I, I never, I never listened to a lot of rock. I listened to sad, gothy stuff and metal. Like, I just never listened to that much rock. Um, but Jay loves rock. He's a huge rock fan. So uh, he would come to me with things that were kind of, kind of rock sounding and I would be like oh I don't know why is it in the vein of like the early 80s like rock goddess standing there like "Ah." Uh, maybe a little bit maybe there's a little bit of that little Betsy bitch I don't know (laughs) it's not like no 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 disrespect to Betsy bitch yeah but if it feels rock I'm like I don't know I can't do that and he's like just try singing over it so I'll just try coming up with a melody and then a really cool melody will come out and I'll be like oh that's great I love singing that okay let's totally do that so definitely pushes me out of my comfort zone. Yeah, you know what? That's great, man. I, you know what? It, it, I got to commend the writing duo uh, of you and Jay because it, it really does work. It really does work where it really transcends the fact that there's a relationship involved. It really transcends the whole duo aspect. It really encompasses 
as I mentioned before, a very, very sedative, but yet captivating atmosphere. And what is very impressive is that you're able to do that live. Do you find yourself being pressured? And this, this also encompasses your other projects when you're playing live to capture that ambiance that you record so well. Uh, no, I definitely don't. The only pressure I have is to be present and authentic while still paying attention to the technical parts of playing the song well. Um, that's really the only thing I think about. I just, I really try and just serve the music. Um, and if you serve the music, you're serving the people, you're serving everything. That is yeah. so well put. Yeah. I'm impressed. Los Johnny, are you impressed? Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm we are fan. fans, we're by fans. the way. Jeez. By the way, we're not stalkers, but we are fans. Um, hands off, Jenny. Let's play some more music. Hit it. Wherever the unwary sleep, beware the terror of the witch's curse. Wherever the infirm struggle for life, beware the doom of the living dead.
Boss Johnny, what did we hear? Oh, fucking more heaviness. I'm just letting this song play because it's just like, hey, down. <laughs> coming down the aisle is bachelor number one. His name is Jimmy Cabs. He likes skinny jeans and he has a diabetic glow about him. Oh, boy. Don't start with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we just heard Blood Ceremony. Awesome band who I think I saw open for Ghost at the Roxy. That, that is correct. That was an awesome show and they're an awesome band. Uh, name that song is called Master of Confusion from the record of called Blood Ceremony. And we started this set with Black Mare. The song Terror from the, or Terror? Terror. Terror. From the record, Field of the Host. Oh, my God. Heavy shit, man. Now, this record is out now, correct? That's correct. All right. Yeah. How can people get a hold of this record? Oh, uh, they can get it. Well, if they want vinyl, they can get it from The Crossing. And uh, if We they, love vinyl. Now, yeah. The Crossing is... Omid. It, great I can't guy. say his last name, but uh, Omid runs The Crossing, and he is a great guy. and Puts out some really great stuff. Yeah, yeah, will you really, be having the vinyl at the show? I will have the vinyl at the show. Boom. Oh, mm -hmm. I need that. I need that. Yeah, and then uh, the CD is out in Europe, so it's available on Human Jigsaw Records. Um, but it's also available on iTunes and Amazon and all that stuff. How, how has the response been in Europe? Uh, well, I, the, I mean, it just came out like a month ago, so the press has been really good. I, I don't know what to say besides that. It's been getting a lot of good press. Have you played out in Europe as? Black Mare? No. No, no, no. What about Asians? Yeah. Yes, we yeah. have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our, our first tour we ever did was in Europe uh, in September and October of 2012. Yeah, yeah 2012. that's right. Yeah, did you trip Facebook. out like on their interpretation of an American breakfast? At <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, this is a smack. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, Euros. We don't like your breakfast. <laughs> All right, so you're playing this Wednesday at the Echo. You're playing with Mutoy Demand and Light Systems, and let's also mention Moss Breaker. That's, this is happening this Wednesday at the Echo. For those of you that really want to go experience what I have been talking so highly about, the Black Mare experience, this Wednesday is it. Make sure you go and check out Get Black there early. Mare. Yeah, get there early because you're playing early, correct? Like 930 Oh, Jesus, that's criminal. But, yeah, you should get there early and see Black Mirror. And now, this is worth mentioning, our good friend Dan, Church of the Eighth Day, he's having a great show where you're playing as well. You're playing with Glare, Sumatra, and Child. This is interesting. This is happening at the Complex. We love the Complex. Yes. They got really good beer there. At the they complex. have really good beer, and it's very close to my house. Okay, this is happening April 30th, so jot this down on your calendar as well. Black Mayor will be playing this event as well, and this is only $5. Fuck, Fuck. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to bother. I think you have $5 with list. the cans in the bag. I do, I do. This is uh, brought to you by Church of the Eighth Day. Make sure you check out Black Mayor. Again, let me mention, with Child, Sumatra, and Glare. So and as uh, Sarah pointed out, Glare features uh, some of the members from Ancestors, who That's I'm, interesting. A, big, I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of that yeah. band as well. That is interesting. Now, what are our goals with Black Mare? Uh, wow, well, goals. Are you planning? Right, are, are, right, do, you, do, you want tour. A, do you want to tour? Yes. Do you want to tour? I, mean, I love I, touring. Do you really? Uh huh. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. I love it. What do you like about it? Um, I, I have always loved to be in constant movement. Um, and I love, I just love moving from one place to another and being able to play every single night. Even when you're in that certain region of the United States where it's kind of like, you know, a little bit 20 it's years funny. behind. It's funny. It's amusing. You have to be able to laugh at it. Hey, I girl. Mean, you, were in, you were in a Don Ed Hardy shirt? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, man. Hey, Bye. girl, you going to play Barracuda? <laughs> it's funny. We really, we really should play Barracuda. I know. We should. Ah, we should no, don't do that, please. <laughs> um, yeah, touring is great. That's my, that's my favorite. Uh, you know, Aside that, from creating the music, do so. you find do you find that uh, I mean, obviously you toured with Isaac Gemini. Did you find uh, a surprising aspect to new audiences outside of the so quote unquote market in the United States? Yeah, I feel like people uh, outside of the market get a lot more excited about music. You know what? Yeah, uh, that's I agree with that. Yeah. Possibly because they're more appreciative because they never really get that influence. Right, 
Or they're drinking more because they drink a lot more too. <laughs> <laughs> like Kentucky bourbon. <laughs> What you mean, Black Mirror coming out here? God damn. <laughs> Do you picture yourself taking Black Mirror overseas? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Are you excited about that? Yeah, definitely. That'll It'll definitely happen. We yeah. already invited to, to a small festival, but it actually conflicts with a date that Ides is playing that we're really excited about. How do you separate both projects? Uh, I guess I, I'll figure that out as I go. You know, I haven't really had to deal with any of it yet because... Right now, Ides of Gemini just finished um, recording our album, and it's not coming out till September, so we're not really doing We're kind of in hibernation until the new album comes out, and the Black Mare album just came out. So that the live stuff is really focused on Black Mare right now, and when Ides of Gemini album comes out, it'll, it'll shift to Ides of Gemini to focus on the new album coming out, and, and then who knows? I, I know that you, we asked you this before, and I know that you said that, you know, when it comes to Black Mare, that it's more of a personal aspect for you but do you ever think to yourself I, I don't know if you're as neurotic as i am but do you ever think to yourself like oh man like this would go really well with aids or oh shit but i you know should i throw it towards black man i mean do, is there that kind of like yeah. artistic conflict it's not really conflict that so far it hasn't been a conflict i kind of know which one goes where um definitely how do you uh There's... you know just differentiate how do you do that um, it's just really, it's like time. Like usually an idea comes and it's like a little tiny, you know, breadcrumb or something. And then I'm like, Ooh, this could go in Ides or it could go in, in Black Mare. Like with video ideas right now, that's kind of happening. And, and I'm like, I'm not sure which one. And then another idea comes on, on top of it. And then I start to sort of picture what the music is that it fits into. Uh, so it, it just kind of, it figures out itself if I'm just patient. Now, Jay, do you, do you like, you know, help out a little bit here? Do you throw your two cents in to... With Black Mare, I have no... I keep all my change in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> so you're smart. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's all I you. Know. But, but, the, but then with, with Ides, it's usually, you know, it's my fistful of change on the table that we start with. And now, have you ever, like, experienced that, like, hey, this should be more towards Ides. What do you do? Well, no, because, I mean... Uh, I mean, she, she, me that should be over he, here. Because usually it's the... I'm presenting her with musical stuff for Ides, where she, with Black Mare she comes up with her own stuff, and it doesn't. It doesn't. The music doesn't kind of doesn't go both ways, really. Like if I'm, if I'm. So you right. see the difference? Yeah. Well, I mean, you see the division musically. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, because musically, it usually the idea will start with me for Ides, whereas, I mean, every everything starts with her with Black Mare. So I don't. I just play bass, man. Dude, that's fucking rad. That, is that smart that's the best, or what? That's best plan, dude. I just play bass. I just play bass. Leave me alone. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> All right. So this Wednesday, Black Mare, as we mentioned before, this is happening at the Echo. Make sure you get out and see this. For those of you that are in Los Angeles that want to experience what I already know, this is the perfect example. Make sure you go see the seductive, alluring. And I say this with all due respect, uh, Jay. But really, I'm sure you've experienced this live. Because I've seen when you've played with Ides of Gemini where you have that whole kind of like hostile alpha male fucking atmosphere and then they're all sedated. They do get really calm and sedated. I, you know, I, I, I love that, man. I think that, yeah. that I, it, I could go on two angles, but I think that what it really is is it's that enchanting, bringing to the bosom, kind of like relaxing atmospheric environment that you provide. And I mean, you know, I mean, for me and Los, for Lost Johnny and I to be fucking mesmerized, because we're usually dicks, right? Yes. Are we like pinpointing little Nick picks? We're we're both like. Dude, you're playing that guitar out of that amp. <laughs> I should I should say it's not it's not cheap to drug everyone's drink like that, but we do. <laughs> we make that that financial. Now let sacrifice. me let me be let me also be very uh, uh, forward here. Uh, Jay, you are a DJ at a local bar here in Los Angeles called Footsies, which yes, is sir. every Tuesday. And I got to tell you, you not only open it up with like Scott Carlson from Repulsion, and then I was just recently there when Roska, is it Roska from the Lightning Swords? Did I pronounce that correctly? Roska, yes. yeah, yeah. I got to tell you, man. After a couple of after a couple of beverages, and then they the, pour them pretty strong there too. I got to tell you though, the music selection will really make you rock out like you're like at a Molly Hatchet concert, like. 
It, oh, it yeah. is amazing what That's you can accomplish. The shit. I haven't heard that song in a long time. But anyways, you DJ at Footsies, and why don't we talk about that, man? When are you there? You're there every Tuesday, right? Every Tuesday. It, um, it's Heavy Tuesday. Heavy Tuesday, yeah. It's it's, uh, it's usually myself, Scott Carlson from Repulsion, and uh, Tom Neely, who your listeners might know as the creator of the Henry and Glenn Forever <laughs> comic book. Yes. Yeah. We're big fans of that. Okay. We don't, need, we don't need to explain that. Yeah. Then. yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's amazing what you can accomplish when you, everyone in the bar is hammered. Now, let me ask you this, because <laughs> there's a very artistic factor to music selection that goes unappreciated. How do you come, how, what is your process when you're compiling your selections for when you're DJing? I wish I could tell you there's some sort of rhyme or reason for it. Usually it's just, you know, I, I, it's very selfish. It's like, I want to hear this song right now. Or, or I feel like, you know, this song would go well with this song. But I don't, I mean, there's very little. Have you ever I, got... I know some people treat it like a science, and I appreciate that. But I, I just, I go with... It's on a whim. I just, I just go with it. So you, know? you really go with just whatever the fuck you want to hear? Yeah, I mean, I pick out my records beforehand because we're all vinyl. So it's not like I can just pull up anything on the internet than anyone wants to hear or that I, even I want to hear. If it's got to be, you know. So I pick the vinyl beforehand, then I just kind of Have you ever ring thought it. about playing, like, Black Mare or, like, you know, Ed's a Gemini or Black Mouth Horseman? I, we haven't. Um, I don't think we've played any. I think we played Ides of Gemini once because we, we, we had just got the new 7-inch <laughs> and we wanted to see what it sounded like in a real, like, sound system. But other than that... One of your guest DJs. Played. Yeah, one of our. Yeah, it wasn't even me who played it. it was, I think Tom played it. Yeah. I gotta tell you, Ben, you do a great job. Thank uh, you, DJ. Sir. You you actually really put us all to shame. Uh, all the DJs at Footsies, they really did a great job, man. They, they make me look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> all right, so let's mention again, Black Man Horseman. They will be playing this Wednesday at Black the Mare. Echo. I'm sorry, Black Mare. <laughs> what an idiot. Black Mare Horseman. They will be playing this Wednesday <laughs> at the Echo. Make sure you go experience what I already know. And also, as we mentioned before, this is really going to be a great show. This is happening at the Complex, April 30th. Okay, This is Church of the Eighth Day, our good friend Dan Dismal. This is with Glare, Sumatra, Black Mare, and Child. And this is only for five bucks. Five bucks. So I'm not even going to ask Dan to be on the guest list. This is a must. How can people, we mentioned this before, how can people get your record? Uh, Human Jigsaw puts out the Black Mare record, and uh, the vinyl is via the Crossing Records. And you will have the vinyl at your live shows. Yes. Which is mm -hmm. most important, because vinyl, as we all know, is now very appreciated. It's true. Fucking Make, A, I gotta get It's not even making a comeback, it's come. It's here. It's yeah, definitely it's here. here. It's done. All right, let's listen to one more track off this great record, and then we'll get back and say farewell to the lovely Sarah Timms and also Jay Bennett. I don't get a lovely. Dashing. You know what? You. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be. Let me let me pound a couple more beers. Suave. <laughs> Hands up, Jenny. Hit it. <laughs>
night of the witch's Sabbath, the Coven of Thirteen gathers for the Black Mass of Death. Right. That sounds like you after dinner. <laughs> All right. Black Mare will be playing, as we mentioned before, this Wednesday. That's happening at the Echoplex. And then this is most important. April. Where's the date on this? All right. April 30th. This is going on at the Complex. I love that place. This place is fucking awesome, man. And uh, they have a great beer selection. This is, going, this is a show brought to you by Church of the Eighth Day. This is Glare, Sumatra, Black Mare, and Child. Make sure you get your tickets for that. All right. Five bucks, dude. Come on. All right. Monday is St. Paddy's Day. And as you know, a good uh, portion of my audience will be going out to bars getting fucked up. Jeff Bo, are you on the line? Yes, sir. How you doing, Jimmy? Hey, Jeff. Great to hear from you. Now, listen. Tomorrow is St. Paddy's Day. As you and I both know, people will be going out and they will be indulging in mass consumption of green beers and God knows what else. They'll be drinking plenty of the whiskey. Yeah, they'll be plenty drinking. What advice do you have for these people once they leave the bar? Everybody's Irish on St. Paddy's Day, huh, Jimmy? I wear a ball. <laughs> <laughs> what the advice? best you- advice, honestly, don't drink and drive. Don't do it. Don't do it. Take a cab to the bar and leave in a cab to go home. You know they're That's not going to the do that, you know, they're not gonna, asking, you know they're not going to do that, They can Jeff. call Lyft, you know, get one of those cars with the pink mustaches on it. You yeah. know they're not going to take a bus to a bar. You know they're not going to take a cab, especially if you're from East L.A., man. They're going to be driving their cars. So if they <laughs> leave the bar... And I don't want to I don't want to encourage this, but you know people go to bars and they get fucked up, man. It's very rare that someone's like, "Oh, I've had two beverages. I better chill the fuck out." Right. What should they do if they encounter law enforcement? By the way, let me just mention this real quick. Uh, all comments expressed by Jimmy Cabs or his guests do not in any way, shape, or form reflect Skid Row Studios staff, management, or their sponsors. All right. Get that legal stuff out of the way, okay, Jimmy? So here's the deal. I think you're asking me if someone has been drinking, they're behind the wheel, lo and behold, they're getting lit up by law enforcement, what to do, what not to do. Am I right? Exactly. All right. If you didn't take Jeff Ball and Jimmy Cab's advice not to drink and drive and you're in that situation, be polite. First things first. Have respect. They're going to arrest you anyways. Don't be an asshole. Cop's going to remember you. You be a nice guy, nice girl, the cop may forget some of the facts of the case later on should you decide to go to trial. Nevertheless, here's what you do. You do not blow. Always bleed. Remember that. I think your, your, your um, clientele, your listeners can remember that. Don't blow. Always bleed. Why? Don't take a breath test. Take a blood test. The reason why I say that, Jimmy, is because I can retest your blood. When you take a breath test after your second blow, they got to take two in California, they purge the machine. Your breath sample dissipates into air. It's gone. I can't retest that. Blood must be saved for a year. So regarding what test you take, don't refuse the test. Don't refuse the test because that's the automatic one-year revocation suspension of your driving privilege for a first offense. Second offense, two-year revocation, and so on. Nevertheless, always take a blood test because I can retest it for alcohol content, and then I go two steps further. I check it for preservative, the amount of preservative that was in there, sodium fluoride, there's supposed to be a certain amount, and I check to see if there's any bacteria present in the blood sample. Law enforcement doesn't do that. The prosecutor doesn't do that. They only check for alcohol level. So that's if you get arrested. God forbid you get arrested because you've been drinking and driving. The best way out of a DUI is this. Don't answer any questions. Ah, yes. Don't take any field sobriety test. Simply say this. I hope your listeners got a pencil and and paper handy. Here's what you do. Take note, fuckers. The the officer's going to arrest you. He's going to smell the booze on you. He's going to see the vomit on your shirt, the open <laughs> can of Bergie next to you. I mean, you're done. He's going to see all that fucking powder on your shirt. He's going to see the Tommies all over your chest. <laughs> so here's what you do, man. Here's what you do. <clears throat> you're going to get arrested anyways. Be polite. 
tell the officer, I'm not going to answer any questions, officer. I'm not going to take any tests. If you arrest me, I, de- I demand a blood test. Okay, that's on the field, correct? That's right. You don't blow into any handheld device. Remember the golden rule, don't blow, always bleed. Right. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. So that includes the handheld handheld preliminary alcohol screening device. Do not blow into that. Now, what if you run into, uh, uh, let's just say, law enforcement that tends to be very alpha male-ish and very threatening, and they tell you that you're going to be, that you're fucking yourself over and you're making it harder for yourself. You have that right to decline those on-field sobriety tests, correct? Yes. You do not have to submit the field sobriety test. If your case goes to trial, the prosecutor can comment on your failure to comply with the field sobriety test as your consciousness of guilt. However, your defense attorney simply asked the cop on the stand, isn't it legal? Don't we have the right to refuse refuse field sobriety tests? And the officer says, yes, of course, it's your right. You don't have to take field sobriety tests. The preliminary breath test the handheld breath testing machine is a field sobriety test. Ah. Do not blow, always bleed. And important, don't answer questions. Remain silent. We've all watched uh, Adam 12 and Dragnet since we were kids growing up and whatever cop shows you got now. Remain silent. The officer wants to know how much you drank, wants to know when you drank. He needs to put that in the report in order for them to make it easier to convict you. Simply say nothing. Say, officer, if you arrest me, I demand a blood test. I'm not going to take anything else. That's it. So, Jeff, would it be safe to say, like, the most common mistake people do when they get pulled over, especially people that are not, like, criminals and affiliated with the process of dealing with police, is they get nervous and they'll say something like... So, uh, where are you coming from? Oh, uh, I came from fucking Los Johnny's house. And, uh, well, uh, do you, have you had any alcoholic beverages? Oh, I only had two beers. And a joint. Isn't that fuck? Is, should they, they should just keep their mouth shut, correct? Absolutely. That's the standard response. And most of the uh, police reports I read for DUI clients, it's two drinks, two beers, or two glasses of wine. Just don't say a word. Say nothing. You don't have to. Why do you want to help convict yourself out of your own mouth? Don't do it. Yeah, well put. Now... Real quick, I got to add this because lately uh, with this whole cannabis fucking uh, infatuation, the same goes for fuckers that like to puff, right? If you get pulled over and you're stoned, DUI affects you as well, correct? Even if you have a so-called quote-unquote medical card. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. They figure, oh, I got this Prop 215 recommendation. I know I can carry less than an ounce of weed for personal use. That means I could drive. No, that's not true. No. What? Because there is such a thing as DUI drugs. Drugs meaning weed, coke, meth, you name it. So DUI marijuana is a crime. Yes. All right. So in other words, the same applies if you're like a puffer and you got a bunch of fucking cookies in your pocket, right? Keep your mouth shut. Yeah, but, but let's be clear. I think I understand your question now, Jimmy. In this instance, if you've been smoking bowls all day and you don't even like alcohol, but the cop sees you weaving all over the road, and let's hope the cop doesn't realize you've been smoking weed, then you don't want a blood test, right? Exactly. You want a breath test. Ah. So the first rule I said is for alcohol only. But if you've been, you know, hanging out with Bob Marley. Or Salvador hey, Mike. You want, to, you want to blow. You don't want to bleed. All right, Jeff Fall, how can people get a hold of you if for some reason they totally disregarded this free, awesome advice and yeah, they get dude. all fucked up tomorrow at Footsies? i just kidding. On the web, my man, <laughs> crimeattorney.com. All one word, crimeattorney.com. Jeff Fall, you're the best, man. Uh, for those of you that are listening, not only can I vouch for Jeff Fall being the true metal gladiator, but you really do. If you find yourself in this situation... I'm speaking firsthand from my own experience. It's humiliating. It's fucking traumatic. You and want, expensive. And expensive. You want to have a true lawyer that's going to back you, that's going to be credible, economically feasible, and guide you in the right path. So, again, this free advice, take it for what it is. But if you find yourself in that net, especially tomorrow, because it's St. Patty's Day, and let me tell you, Law officers are out there. They've been out there this weekend. Dude, this whole week they've been out on the hunt, man. It's gnarly.
So, Jeff Fole. Jeff Fole, again, how can people get a hold of you? On the web, crimeattorney.com. I am centrally located in Hollywood, California. All right. We love you, man. Thank you, Jeff. Take care, Jimmy. Later, bro. See ya. All right. By the way, you know, Jeff Vol is a real deal fucking attorney. Like, he is no joke. He's the fucking gnarly, as you like to call, legal octagon warrior. Yeah, he got me out of my shit. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, it fucking sucked. Again, kids, very important uh, advice. Shut the fuck up. Don't no one wants to hear how you got drunk in my house or uh, stoned at Salvadorian Mike's house. And no one, you know, no one wants to see Tommy's, you know, drunkenly spilled all over your chest. Shut the fuck up. Do your thing. Hopefully you'll get out of it and be cool. All right. Let's mention again, Black Mare Horseman, which has nothing to do with this. Jesus Christ, Cavs, Black Mare. Black Mare, whatever. I'm a fucking East L.A. guy. Black Mare will be playing this Wednesday at the Echo. As we mentioned before, they're going to be playing with Light Systems and Moss Breaker. And Mutoid Man, which Thank features uh, some of the guys in Caven and Converge. This so, is going to be a great boom. show. Make sure you get there early. You're playing around what time again? 9.30. Get there early and experience what I know. And then this is most important. April. Coming in April at the Complex. April 30th. Make sure you check out Glare, Sumatra, Black Mare, and Child. This is also going on. This is brought to you by the Church of the Eighth Day. This is only $5. I'm ashamed to even ask Dan to be on the guest list. Make sure you go check this out. This is going to be a great show as well. And also, how can people pick up your new record? The Crossing Records has the vinyl. Uh, it can be downloaded actually at Black Mare Bandcamp, as well as Amazon, iTunes, and Human Jigsaw Records. All right. I want to thank Sarah Timms and also Jay Bennett of Black Mare. I want to also... And also Ida Gemini. Absolutely. But I also want to say this. It's very, very refreshing for me to have the opportunity to speak to true artists. Very refreshing for me to be able to say that in Los Angeles, artistic credibility still exists. Um, I really enjoy all your projects, Sarah. But one of the things that comes collectively in mind is that it is articulate, art, artistically authentic. And what you do really comes from the heart. I want to thank you for what you're doing. And I want to thank you for being on The Very Manic Jimmy Kimmel Yeah, Show. fucking give these guys a round of applause. Thanks for uh, listening and for appreciating it. I can't believe I said that like without fucking it up. <laughs> you, you can you can say that whole you know diatribe, but you can't get the fucking band name right. Come know. on, all dude. Right. <laughs> all right, thank you, thank you for being here. Also, let's mention Jay. You'll be DJing every Tuesday at Footsie's. Yeah, every yeah. <clears throat> Actually, I won't be there this Tuesday. But, uh, <laughs> Whoops. In, in all future all future Tuesdays, yes. All right. And as we mentioned before, tomorrow, a lot of you will be getting really fucked up. And, you know, it's funny because, like, here in downtown L.A., they're really encouraging you to to come into the uh, festive, atmospheric, intoxicating events of St. Paddy's Day. But then they have LAPD fucking right, right way, there. Right ready to get you into the system. So make sure you listen to Jeff. Just lay out the Bowl bit of the whiskey advice. a bit, Mard. Yeah, make sure you lay off the bucket whiskey. Go with one kind of green, marijuana. <laughs> All right. With that, we're going to end the show. Hands off, Jenny. Mr. X, thank you very much. Thank you all for listening. See ya.
ultimate world of what he believes to be reality. But there is, unseen by most, an underworld, a place that is just as real, but not as brightly lit. A dark side.